Hey guys, today we are going to look at transformations of linear functions and we are going to use the Desmos graphing calculator that I have off to the side to help us visualize the transformations. Before we actually look at transformations, let's review some basics about function notation. So remember f of x is function notation, x is the input or the x coordinate, and if you think about what it does on an axis, that is the horizontal coordinate the horizontal axis. So any changes that we make inside the parentheses are going to be a horizontal change because we're changing the x coordinate. Then all of f of x is basically the same thing as y and that is our vertical coordinate because the y axis is the vertical axis and y and f of x are changeable. So if we do any changes outside the parentheses, then it is going to be a vertical change. So inside the parentheses is a horizontal change. Outside of the parentheses, we're changing all of f of x or y, so that's a vertical change. So let's just start with the most basic line. f of x equals x is the linear parent function. because it is the most basic line. So let's go ahead and graph that on Desmos and see what the slope and y-intercept are. So we are going to write f of x, because our, the calculator will, will remember what f of x is, equals x. So there is the parent function. We have a slope of just one. You can see we're going up one over one. And you can tell from the equation that the slope is one. So slope is one, and then the y-intercept is zero. We go through the origin, which you can see that here too. So on all of the graphs, I have the parent function graphed because we are going to be comparing all of the transformations to that. So f of x equals x is the linear parent function. The slope is one, the y-intercept is zero. Now we're gonna do some transformations to that. So what is going to happen when I add two to this function? I'm going to take f of x and I'm going to add two to it. So as you can see there, it looks like we did a translation. I just slid the line up to. If you're looking at the y-intercept, it looks like I went up to. So this is a translation. Up to. Remember, f of x is the same thing as y, so we were changing the y, so that's why it was a vertical change and we went up to. So our slope, based on the Desmos graph, it's still the same, it's still one but our y-intercept change, it is at two. So let's go ahead and graph that. I have a y-intercept of two, but my slope is still just one. So there's the transformed line. Okay, so this one, the next transformation, instead of adding two, I'm subtracting two. It is outside the parentheses, so I'm changing y. So I know it's gonna be a vertical transformation. Let's see what happens when I subtract two. Looks like I go down two. I didn't change the slope at all. I just slid the line down. So this is a translation down two. I can tell those lines are parallel, so it still is gonna have a slope of one, but the y-intercept this time is negative two. So let's go ahead and graph that. We have a y-intercept at negative two, and then my slope is still the same, just one. Okay, this time I am adding and subtracting inside the parentheses. So that means it's going to be a horizontal change because I'm changing the x coordinate here. So let's see what happens when inside the parentheses I add two. 
So it looks like it went up to, but remember it's inside the parentheses, so it's really a horizontal translation. So if I'm looking from the origin, it looks like I went left to. So this was another translation since I didn't change the slope of the line, and I knew it was a horizontal change since it was inside the parentheses, and I went left to. So inside the parentheses is kind of opposite of what you would think. Plus two, we would generally think right to, but that is actually left to. So our slope remains the same. This is still a parallel line, but our y-intercept is a two. So the y-intercept is a two, and then my slope was one. Okay, then I have minus two inside the parentheses instead of plus two. So it's gonna be another horizontal translation. And this time I'm going right to. I know it was horizontal because the change was happening inside the parentheses. So this is a translation right to. My slope remained the same. My y-intercept changed though, became negative two. So let's go ahead and graph that. Y-intercept was negative two, slope is still one. So there is the transformed line. So let's look at what we did. It's kind of hard to differentiate the translations um, with lines whenever we get to parabolas in the spring those have more shape and it's a little bit easier to see the transformations. But whenever you add or subtract, that's going to be a translation. We're just gonna be shifting it. And when we add two outside the parentheses, it's up. When we subtract two outside the parentheses, it's down. When we add two inside the parentheses, it was left. And when we subtract two inside the parentheses, it was right. And when we do a translation, it doesn't change the slope, but it changes the y-intercept. So now let's look at the last couple here. We're gonna be multiplying by something. So let's see what that changes this time. So I have two times f of x. So I did not shift the, or the y-intercept at all, but it looks like I did change my slope. So this is a dilation or we will call it a vertical stretch by a factor of two. So the reason it's a vertical stretch is because it was outside of the parentheses. So if you think about a vertical stretch, we just took the line and we vertically pulled it, stretched it that way. So my slope changed. My slope of that green line, it looks like it's two, up two over one, which you can see we multiplied by two, so that makes sense. And then my y-intercept didn't change, it remained zero. So let's go ahead and graph that. We have a y-intercept at zero, and then my slope is two up two over one. So there is that vertically stretched or dilated line. Okay, then the next one, instead of multiplying by two, I'm multiplying by one half. And instead of becoming steeper, it looks like we become less steep. This was another dilation, but this time it was a vertical compression. By a factor of one half. So our slope as you can see from the green line is now one half, which makes sense because that's what we multiplied by. The y-intercept stayed the same. 
So we vertically compressed it. That means that we were pressing down on the line like this and it made a less steep slope. My y-intercept is still zero, but the slope was one over two. So there's that vertically compressed line. So let's summarize what we just did. If we have, if the absolute value of the number that we're multiplying by is greater than one, then that is going to make the slope more steep. So if we have like two, three, four, or five, something that's greater than one, that's gonna be the slope, which is steeper than one. Then if the absolute value of this number is less than one, then it's going to become less steep. So, so far when we've added or subtracted, that has been a translation. And when we've multiplied, that's been a dilation. Now we are going to make the function negative. So let's see what type of transformation happens there. It looks like the line just flipped. So we would call that a reflection over the x-axis. So my slope, it looks like it's the same slope, just the opposite direction. So my slope is negative one. And then my y-intercept didn't change, it is zero. So the slope is down one over one. So there's the basics of linear transformations. When you add, it is a translation. When you multiply, it's a dilation and it changes the slope. And then when you have a negative, that is a reflection and it flips the line.